Hi guys, it's Granny Turner speaking. Welcome to the weekly Farm Sim News from 12th of August till 18th of August 2023. The beginning of the week was very slow and cozy, summer holiday like, and I already thought, oh, no news today? Oh, what a pity. But then on Thursday, a huge news article dropped at the Farming Simulator website and we got a trailer about the premium expansion. And in the blog article, we got a list of all the upcoming machines and all the items. And I already made a dedicated video about this, therefore, in here in this video only rather short uh, yeah they tell us about the premium expansion that will come out of on 14th of november as we already know and here is the list of all the machines just the text and we also got a list of all the placeables and other items and there are quite a lot and I'm looking forward to it a lot, especially I like this house, but there are others, there are sheds and other farmhouses, factories, all kinds of stuff and we got this trailer. Yeah, and I just um, let it run. It's a short trailer, so we don't lose so much time. And I think it's enjoyable to watch. Here they uh, cherry pick the most interesting machines and then buildings and placeables those are the street lanterns and look how old fashioned and run down and so we get a whole new building style uh, with this pack that we can use on our other maps as well if we activate the premium dlc yeah, that's it already with the trailer and here we have some more images that we already saw and this wonderful house, this metal shed that could easily be on a US farm, I guess, and a wooden house and here those wonderful street lanterns. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. And then today on Friday, the list of all machines, no, not the list, the mini, mini fact sheets of all machines dropped. As you can see, this is on the page where you can buy the new pack on the Farming Simulator.com website. And for the last DLCs, I made um, small fact sheets for all of those machines that we get. But this time I won't have the time for it, sadly. And therefore there won't be a dedicated video about those all machines. Um, but if you want to get this information, you can have a look here. And the images are small, but you can see them and then it's easier to imagine than just from the name in a list and yeah you get some of the most important informations but not the in-game price this is always missing in this kind of fact sheets here are the three tractors we get two of them are uh, vintage tractors and one is this cute green little tiny tractor oh how much horsepower has it oh it has 59 horsepower it's not too bad and it's from Zalek and we already got a trailer and some small appliances from this manufacturer and this is Zito uh, we uh, in the base game we have a lot of modern tractors from Zito and this is a vintage tractor 
I think it really fits to the whole theme of this pack that we got vintage tractors because I guess um, they are not everything is modern even here most of the farmers have a, some very old-fashioned tractors very very vintage and some in this style and then so every 10 or 20 years they buy a new tractor and you can see them all in the in the farm and they still use the old ones as well this is a fiat tractor fiat agri and um, herbicide sprayer self-propelled and um, new kind of pickup and here is the self-propelled harvester for carrots and such and it's a huge machine and i guess very expensive and we get quite a lot of other vegetable harvesters they are in the vegetable technology category and they are uh, pulled by a tractor and i guess they are much cheaper but still expensive i think and I don't know whether those are harvesters, but those are harvesters, I, I, I think. And there is even more in the vegetable technology area to make all this little, little hills and such. Yeah, and a lot of other equipment, um, nearly in all area so cedars and planters and cultivators and all kinds of stuff here a new set of of mowers even i hope they are cheap <laughs> i always happy about cheap equipment because mo mostly i start small and then i need uh, cheap equipment <laughs> Yeah, and here is this uh, metal shed and a special pellet box for vegetables that you can use for the harvest. That's it about the premium expansion pack from this week. And then Giants told us that they are at Gamescom in Germany late uh, August and that there is a bale stacking tournament or something like that you can earn prizes fantastic prizes so if you happen to come to germany to the gamescom in late august then you can win fantastic prizes and unleash the fun yeah and here we are at the motab and it was quite a busy week at Motham. Even if uh, we are still in the summer holiday time here, at least um, a huge parts of Germany are still in the summer holiday time. Uh, it, according to every area has different times for summer holidays in Germany. We got five maps which is a lot and we got an update for the court farm from oxygen david and quite interesting mods so we'll have a look at all the maps uh, after going through the whole maps and here is new will be the global market maybe you remember the global market from fs19 it was an add-on to global company and you can share prices and products with your friends uh, even when you are not online in a moment or not playing multiplayer together you can still somehow play together a very interesting concept and there is the crop calendar by yours who also made the liftable pellets and liftable bales mods 
And this crop calendar manager uh, allows you to take the crop calendar from one map that you have installed to a different map. And yeah, I find this is a very interesting feature. And here even more maps and vehicles and all kinds of machines. Not so many updates this week. Here a very huge cow barn. We'll have a closer look at this. Some sheds and barns and a large old chicken cube. Oh, there must be a million chickens in this. Yeah, and some decorative stuff. Then even more maps. And that's pretty much it for this week. So let's have a closer look. The Crater Lake uh, was available also for FS19. And it's more or less a foresting map with um, some fields that you can see here. And it has a lake in the center and yes, some infra infrastructure. And you can cut down all the trees and then expand your farm. Yeah, and you have a lot of snow. And this map is available for all platforms and was made by Poor Boy and Catalyzer Industries. And then we have Baranya map by Davidov. This is available for all platforms. And it is a um, Hungarian map. A replica of the real environment. You need quite a lot of required mods. And it's a really small map, as you can see here. But you see this um, a satellite image from Google Earth or so. And this map is made uh, by this. Yeah, I think it's a nice landscape. It looks very natural because it is, because it's from um, a real real life area. And here we have Erlingen. And Erlingen mm, sounds like Erlangen, where uh, Giants is located in Germany. But Erlingen has more or less nothing to do with Erlangen. Erlingen is just a small village located in Bavaria, somewhere between Erlengrad and Felsbrunn. Um, yeah, so it's a um, Bavarian map and available for all platforms, made by Flacco Farmer. And it needs quite a lot of required mods. And here you can see you uh, find the neighborhood to Erlengrad on the first glance already with irregular fields. Yeah. And then the next map is quite an adventure. This is made by Ola Haldor and available for all platforms. Maybe you know Ola Haldor. He made Renabu in it. This is a real life map from Norway and it's a 16 times map, a huge map. And this is his first um, crossplay map available for consoles as well. And it has a really nice and funny idea. You are playing in a sandbox, in a literal sandbox here. So around you, Behind the borders of the map uh, is the farm of your parents, so to say. 
and this is the those are the boards of the sandbox and here you can play inside this and this is a real working map with a train and with some fields not so many so it's i think 19 fields that you have and they are somehow scattered around a lot of landscape so it's not a condensed tiny map like usual when a tiny uh, only few fields are uh, put all together and around them there is big nothingness this uses the whole area of um, standard size map and the very few fields are scattered around as you can see here and in the middle we have a big mountain range yeah and i find this idea very interesting and the ride with the train is a lot of fun i did it in my videos about this map and you can have a good impression just by going around. It's a round trip train and we jumped on the train and drove around and had a good look at the map. And the last map of this week is the Obertal. It's a map of an area in Germany, southern Germany, close to the Alps, but not yet in the Alps. And it's a four fourfold map and it's only for PC and map the uh, Mac therefore and yeah here you need the production revamp as a required mod and here you can see this is the typical southern Germany, Switzerland uh, style of buildings with irregular fields. And if you like the mountains in the background, I made them. Yeah, and I gave them to the modder and I'm quite happy to see them again. I wanted, first I wanted to use those mountains on my map, Wunzig. But then I thought, okay, no, they are too high. Um, I don't want my Wunzig map to be in the high orbs. I want it more in the medium size mountains. And therefore, I put those mountains away and used the other mountains. And the mapper of this asked me for, for the mountains. And I was happy to give them to him because now they are used and that makes me very happy those snow covered steep mountains and here you see the big hotel from Erngrad and here you can see the mountains <laughs> that's all i see on this map the mountains sorry about that <laughs> but i'm very very happy that uh, this this mountains got their own home now and then we have this huge cow barn and i find it really interesting uh, it's not very cheap it costs two hundred fifty thousand bucks but it is cheap compared to the base game barns and you can have 500 cows and the capacity for the food and such is huge and it's an interesting concept here you can see the cows can be on a meadow and but the meadow is not directly at the farm so they have to go somewhere here we see the in inside and here we can see outside they have those little spaces here and then there is something like a narrow gangway where they can go to the meadow i guess yeah and i like the building I can definitely imagine to play with this once if I want to have a lot of cows. Yeah, and it's available for all platforms.
and then we have the global market and trade goods with all other players. So this is a chance to play together with players without playing multiplayer. You can trade goods with other players regardless of single or multiplayer mod mode. And you need to install um, a separated available exe file, so an additional program or app, and you can download it on the Discord from the mod creator. And for the farm sim you need this mod and then on plus the installed exe file. And then you can use it and can share prices and goods. And I think this gives a new dimension to the game. And for me, I think I won't use it, but if you want to be connected with other players through sharing prices and sharing goods, then this is a very good opportunity. And now we'll have a look on what I did this week, I built a carp. <laughs> and yeah, it's not a perfect carp, to be honest, but it took me a lot of time to build it. And it was a lot of fun. And I hope I learned a lot because later maybe I can be able to make a rabbit, but uh, this is far in the future. And yeah, I need this for my map Wunzig, where I want to have a carp pond with a production. And yeah, here you can see part of the fishing village. On my German map Wunzig, this is not yet finished, this fishing village, but uh, it, it will have two more houses here and it will stay very small and tiny and simple but somehow I fell totally in love with doing this uh, fishing village so a little bit cozy and old-fashioned and so and here I made a small video when you go into it and the flying houses will will be deleted later. I still need them for the next houses, but they are already pedestrians. And this will get a real road and so. And here is one carp um, for you to, to look at it. And then I put them into the pond and they swim in little groups. Yeah, and that kept me really busy, those ponds and the carps and the fishing houses, and it's still not finished. Yeah, and it was a lot of fun. Okay, so here we have another image of this fishing village, and I will keep on working on this till it is more or less finished. The final touch will come later. And then maybe I'll work on an, a very early alpha version next week that it can be not really played. You could play on it then. So grow your crops and sell them and such. But it's far, far, far from finished. But I think it would be nice for some of you just to go there and look around and get an impression of the areas that I already really touched. And then there are quite a lot of areas that are still very rough and unfinished. But um, maybe you can get a feeling of what to expect from this map when it's done. And then starting from the middle of September. Why the middle? Because I want to visit my grandkids at the beginning of September. So starting from the middle of September, I will go 
keep on working on my uh, map Marigold Farm. Only few hours a week to make a video about it like I did. And I will keep on working on this Wunzig map to get it finished finally. And then when this is finished, I hopefully find more time for the American map Marigold Farm. And I'm really looking forward to it because yeah, I think I will like this Marigold Farm map a lot. And yeah, therefore I have a lot to do and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so I wish you a very good day. Thank you for watching. And I forgot that what I want to say. So I'm really confused now. I try it again. <laughs> so I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you for watching and all the best. Till next time. Tschüss.